It's a, it's a really exciting time right now for um, understanding how genomics affects um, medications in general. Um, we're doing a number of large studies trying to understand um, both prospectively but also looking back at people's information because of our rich medical record uh, how genetic testing or genomic testing specifically related to the genes that affect drug metabolism and receptors and, and transport um, affect their efficacy and affect their safety. Um, one of those sets of drugs that's looked at in this are those that are used for controlling pain both chronic pain and those that are used in, the, in, for example, the surgical period. It's in the news everywhere right now. The opioid, what we call the epidemic, is a problem. Um, about as many people die per year of opioid abuse, not just drug abuse, just simply opioid abuse, as do in car crashes. Um, this is a real problem in the United States and it's growing throughout the world. A lot of times, the first exposure to a pain medicine like this is in the perioperative period. As an anesthesiologist, that concerns me because I'm the one that's prescribing those medications and giving them to them. So anything that we can do to try to help minimize the exposure to opioids in general, but particularly in the perioperative period, may be helpful. And there's a lot of research that's being done to look at, are there genes that would help predict those individuals that have problems? Um, there's a conference coming up here uh, at Mayo Clinic, and we're having someone speak who's coming and speaking on nicotine addiction and the genetic influences on that. Um, and we've got other speakers that are going to be talking about some of the addiction of uh, the biology of opioid addiction. So maybe that information could be helpful in the future to help guide predicting and avoiding addiction, but it also might be helpful in treating addiction. Now there's lots of reasons why you might respond differently to a medication. Um, it may be that your kidneys function differently. It may be that you're on other medications that interact with those medications or, or accelerate the rate at which your body clears those medications. It has to do with your age, it has to do with your body weight, it has to do maybe even with your sex. But what we also know is that your genes play a role in this. For example, if a drug needs to be cleared by a specific enzyme or protein, the gene that codes for or gives the, the information for that protein varies from everyone to, uh, across the world. Um, what we know from early studies here at Mayo Clinic that if you looked at just five genes related to drugs, 99% of people would have something in one of those genes that could affect their medications. For example, we're doing a study right now called the right study. It's uh, the right drug at the right time uh, for the right dose. And, and what this is looking at is over 10,000 patients at Mayo Clinic and trying to understand what it would mean if we were to have that genetic information regarding drugs available to their providers um, and available to themselves so they could use that information to go and talk with their providers to understand how they should best use medications.